America. This is a Chevy Suburban. I use it to uh, go to the grocery store and bring some groceries. Because what if I need to bring a couple of pumpkins from the pumpkin patch? America. I need a car that's approximately the size of a small town to drive around here. I want whoever's sitting next to me any closer than two to three feet. That's offensive. I need my personal space. America. Everything about this car is huge. The buttons, the dials are huge. The door handle is huge. The screens are huge. My fuel bill is huge because this car only gets 14 city 19 highway ladies and gentlemen because that's what the Chevy Suburban is all about America Welcome to the inside of a Toyota GR86 This is a sister car to the Subaru BRZ. This is the second generation of the car They gave it a little bit more power and it feels really nice in here. You have interesting style dash, it's very plain, but you have these cool retro style round vents, very nice textured steering wheel, a very sticky, very smooth but grippy uh, rubber, uh, a leather steering wheel. You have these large paddle shifters on the, wait, why are there paddle shifters? This should be a manual, Toyota, what are you doing? This is an automatic, it should be a manual. I'm sure there is a manual somewhere, but still, even the manual mode is backwards. I, I'm, I believe backwards should be upshift, but whatever. You have these interesting toggle switches for the climate. Large round dials, but they spin forever. Oh, come on. Well, at least you spent the R&D on the performance of the car. You have heated seats. That's nice. Seats feel very nice. Uh, lower bolstering pushes my legs a little closer together than I would like. And the upper half of the seat is very bolstered nice, keeps your body in place, keeps, you know, shoulders in place. This would be amazing for track days, I'm sure. Side windows, rather narrow, but okay. There are rear seats back here, but unless you're carrying amputees or you're Pomeranian, I wouldn't want to put anything living back there, ever. You do have a little side window there to aid in visibility for your blind spot, which is moderate in size, but not terrible. The deck lid is rather high, but I'm sure there's a backup camera. But that's not what this vehicle is for. Visibility is not the priority. The priority is going fast around a track or an autocross course. And this car does look the part, especially in this really nice red color. A little less aggressive on the front. It has a little bit of a happier face. It reminds me a little bit of older Mazdas. You have these nice black rims. Really nice almost built-in spoiler on the back, but if you look, this car has a dual spoiler. You have one that's sort of molded into the shape of the car, and you have this extra one that's been glued on there. I like the black accents around the taillights. The back of the car looks a little bit more Subaru than the front. It's like Toyota did the front and Subaru did the back. Yeah. Nice dual exhaust. Just a very nice proportioned car. This is the Hyundai Tucson Hybrid. A car that my dad is very interested in at the moment. Very interesting body lines, lots of creases on the sides. It looks like the car hit something, but nope, that's just the styling. Very aggressive sort of hammerhead wheels. Very interesting tail design with all these triangular lights with the light bar that goes across this, the back. It's a very eye-catching SUV. Gets relatively good mileage. Let's try the inside. Inside the Hyundai Tucson Hybrid, very nice design elements. You have this sort of chrome trim that goes across here, interconnects with the air vent on the dash, goes across the digital speedometer back down here, and comes into the center console. And the same thing happens on the other side of the cockpit. You have this large touchscreen here, although with a bunch of capacitive switches on piano black, so that doesn't look like a fun time. No haptic feedback, and a lot of fingerprints to be to be made. A lot of switches here, drive modes, push button shifter, and even more of that piano black finish. Large center console that opens up with this relatively cheap feeling button, unfortunately. But a large cavity in there. Pretty fancy screens. Seat is very cozy, cushy, comfortable. 
has a lot of adjustments. Thigh support's good, although it comes up a bit short on the legs. Uh, side bolstering is, is modest, but this is definitely not anything trying to be sporty. And let's try the back seat. Back seat of the Tucson Hybrid. It's very spacious back here. You have a good view out. You have that chrome trim against the, the back door is mimicking the front. You have rear air vents with some USB ports. I have about mm, four inches of legroom behind the front seats. And uh, very nice. Definitely passes the hair test. You have a moderate C pillar back there, so blind spot's going to be a bit interesting. But it's very comfortable. I could see this being cozy for long road trips. You definitely feel a little bit high up compared to the front seats, but I put the front seat all the way down, so. Welcome to the inside of the Chrysler Pacifica. And if you just time traveled from 2007, you might think that the Chrysler Pacifica is an SUV. Well, it was, and now it's a minivan. Gone is the town and country, and gone is the grand caravan. It is just the Chrysler Pacifica. And then it's actually quite nice in here. You have this nicely uh, blue illuminated dash. Speedometer only goes up to 120 because who the heck is going to be speed racing a minivan? Pretty nice screen. You have a unconventional uh, knob shifter instead of a either a crank or a, or a crank on the dash. Your parking brakes on the dash. A lot of piano black trim that will have fingerprints all over it. But you have buttons and knobs for most uh, controls, so that's nice. You have a power mirror so you can look back there and make sure the kids aren't misbehaving. And as well as this mirror, panoramic mirror, so you can see which kid just threw their Cheerios at you. You can look back here. You can see your uh, two captain's chairs in the second row. A large storage container in the center console. And just a lot of room. It feels like a standard minivan seat. Uh, the seat cushion is a bit flat, although there is slide support, so that's good. Although it comes up a little bit short, it's, it's a fairly good seat. I would say it's, it's mostly good, B+. Plus. Let's take a look at the outside real quick. It's actually a not, not bad looking minivan. I like this blue color on this one. Nice sort of a graphite wheels. A little bit of an aggressive front end. Nice streamlined side, no crazy lines like the Odyssey has, or no weird bulges like the Sienna has. It's just a nicely styled van. It just looks like a traditional van silhouette. You have this large trunk opening in the back, so you can fit all of your kids' sporting equipment for all of the games that you're inevitably going to be driving them to. There is a rather large blind spot big chunky one right in there. Not only is it pretty wide, but it kind of cuts into the width of the interior of the car a little bit. Hard to, hard to see that, but the window is about four or five inches further out from this pillar, so when you're putting stuff in here, you got to realize that the entrance is a little bit narrower than the actual width of the car once you get back here. And that's the Pacifica. Yep, the Pacifica S. I don't know what the S stands for, but people, you should buy minivans. Stop buying SUVs. You don't need that ground clearance. You don't need that all-wheel drive. This is just going to be, this is going to have more space, more utility. Look, it even has these nice sliding doors. Don't get that with an SUV, and the, the track is nicely hidden underneath the third window. So if you need something to carry your kids, haul some tools or bicycles, get a minivan. Just as efficient as an SUV, it's lower to the ground, more aerodynamic, gets rid of the weight of the all-wheel drive, and get over your stupid image problem. This is the 2022 Kia Forte GT. GT gives you some extra sporty flair with these red accents on the front diffuser red accents on the back of the, the grill. This nice blue color. Red accents and the GT emblem on the seats. Get inside. So we're inside the Kia Forte GT. And it looks very nice in here. Those red stitching along the doors. Red accent lighting across the steering wheel and across the dash. 
You have a very familiar Hyundai Kia infotainment, a traditional shifter with heated seats, although their uh, manual mode is backwards. Hello. Electric parking brakes and cup holders. A nice uh, center console, although it's a little short. Your elbow doesn't quite reach in it. It's, it's a little bit harder than I would like it to be. We have a, a decent amount of space in there. You got some paddle shifters on the steering wheel. Nice grippy texture, this perforated leather. Uh, although it's it's not very plush, it's pretty hard. The, the, the leather layer is rather thin. Red stitching on the steering wheel as well, and a flat bottom because sporty. However, because of the sunroof in this car, it does not pass the hair test. My hair is brushing right up against here. Not very pleasant. So if I can't sit in the front, I'm not even going to try the back. Several years ago, Kia came out with this car, the Kia Stinger. And everyone was shocked because people thought of Kia and they thought of Korean trash boxes, but no more. Kia and Hyundai, for that matter, are serious and they are here to stay. They do not play around. And this car is an exclamation point of that. Kind of has the profile of a Tesla Model S, big hatchback. This is actually a hatchback, not a sedan. Thank you, Kia. It looks amazing. It's a very subtly designed car. Uh, but it, you can tell it, it's a very muscular design with big rear fenders, two hood scoops on the hood, sort of angry looking, front grille, black mirrors, black roof. It's just a very nice car. These side vents, which I don't know if they're real or not. Red Brembo brakes, just a very cool looking car. I, I don't quite like this 90 degree turn in the C-pillar, that's my only gripe about the styling. It just doesn't look quite right to me. But enough about the styling that's getting inside. Welcome to the inside of the Kia Stinger. And it is very nice in here. The door materials. Relatively plush up here, but very plush down here. It's a very soft, cushy material. Very nice interior styling. You have these cool sort of retro round dials. All these conventional knobs and buttons. You have a volume knob and a tuning knob. Thank you Kia for keeping things simple. Big chunky shifter. Driving mode dial. You have some paddle shifters up here. It's a very nice place to be. The seat has a lot of adjustment and actually I love the seat because the seat cushion, you can see they spent the extra effort to make it that extra that extra length right in the front there makes a large difference. The seats feel very nice. Seat bolstering is, is moderate, but appropriate. Now, with the seat all the way down, occasionally, depending on my position, my hair brushes up right against here. And once again, it's these nasty sunroofs that do this. If I got a model without a sunroof, I'm sure it'd be fine, but you probably have to get a really low trim for that. Let's try the back seat anyway. And now we're in the back seat of the Kia Stinger. My feet are wedged underneath the seat, not very comfortable. There's a little bit of scalloping out behind the seat, sort of right in your legs. It's, it's further out in the middle and then scalloped on the sides. I have about one inch, half an inch to one inch of leg room there. However, if I lean back, this car does not even pass the head test, let alone the hair test. You can see the sunroof ends right around here, the roof comes up and then it sharply dips down and it's right here, that's where my head is hitting the roof. Now that 90 degree styling on the outside pays a price on the inside because that is a rather sizable blind spot. You can see this red car completely hidden. You cannot see that car pretty much at all and that's a problem on the road. Fortunately I believe this car has blind spot monitoring and it needs it. So. I wouldn't put people back here for a long time. It's not the most comfortable. Plenty of amenities, you got rear vents and everything, but it's just, it's not that cozy. Or it is too cozy, I'll put it that way. And wouldn't it be a review at the Subaru booth without looking at the Forester. One of the most popular Subaru models. This is their small SUV offering. That is actually an SUV, a little taller, a little shorter than the Outback, and this nice green color. Very boxy, very plainly styled, but simple. The wheels are a bit modern and aggressive. So that's nice. Again, very woodsy, rich green color. You have these nicely, nice LED headlights. 
cool grill design and an Easter egg is that in the headlights it actually says Forrester. Let's see how it is on the inside. The inside of the Forester is very similar to the inside of the Outback. You have this contrasting brown trim. You have this sort of uh, sort of diamond textured plastic here. Uh, semi padded here, but hard here. Padded here and there. The brown leather continues across into the seats. I really like the look of this. It looks like a baseball glove across the doors. And you have that textured rubber there. A lot of uh, piano black plastic, big touchscreen. At least it has conventional knobs and buttons for volume, tuning, and your climate. The climate control vents have a nice feel to them. A lot of resistance, and they feel a lot more sturdy. They don't wiggle around as much as the ones in the Impreza. So they spent a little bit more money on that. You got your heated seats and X mode for whenever you're going to take this thing off roading, because you know all of the uh, creeks and rocks and boulders you have to cross to get to Safeway. You know, just want to be ready for everything. Large cubby hole there. Nice, very nicely padded. Center console. Paddle shifters on the steering wheel with a slightly textured, very kind of a plasticky, plushy feeling steering wheel. Big commanding view of the road. Very thin A-pillars. Amazing visibility out the front. It's a very upright, kind of a boxy feeling. You sort of feel like you're in a tissue box. There's like so much glass all around you. Like the visibility in this car is amazing. And you get to sit a little bit up high. It's a nice experience. Let's see the back. In the back seat of the Forester, again, more of this brown leather trim. Hard plastic up here, but it's plush where it matters down here. You do have rear climate vents. A lot of foot room, actually. The seat's all the way down in the front. I do not feel like my feet are being impeded on whatsoever. I have about two to three inches of leg room behind the seats and tons of headroom. Even with the sunroof, the sunroof line does not recede. I mean, it recedes a little bit. You can see in the center area, it's much lower than it is right in here. So even with that, my hair is not touching. And like I said before, amazing visibility in this vehicle. You can just see glass all around. It's a very boxy, very square shape. And uh, makes for a spacious feeling area. Although it comes across a little less elegant, less luxurious than the Outback. The Outback feels a little bit richer of an experience. This is slightly below that, like half a tier below that. A little bit more utilitarian. The seat cushion back here is very flat, very upright. It's a bit more plain of an experience back here, but it, it does the job. Although I wouldn't want to be back here for as long of a trip as the Outback. Welcome to the inside of the Hyundai Elantra and this is the performance version of their compact sedan, the Elantra. And it is very cool looking in here. You have this blue accent lighting that goes all the way across the dash. Blue lighting on your climate uh, controls and your radio buttons, although they all look the same, so it would be difficult to identify what does what with the volume knob. You have this very thin steering wheel with this very grippy leather, although it's not a circular wheel. It kind of has a spine going around the edge here, so that sort of gets into your palm, but it's easy to grip onto large paddle shifters and you have a um, traditional shifter with a manual mode that is the correct direction thank you Hyundai somebody who gets it we have a manual style parking brake and a kind of a low center console armrest here that opens up gives you a little bit of storage space down in there you have this fancy screen speedometer and this large touch screen here black uh, buttons on the steering wheel you have your end button here and you have your other end button here so I guess depending on what mood you're in you can press it with either hand then you got your NGS button the uh, not going slow button I, I have no idea what that does but I'm just making up crap very cool suede texture on the doors you can sort of leave little markings there that's interesting with this little uh, perforated texture on the side transitions nice into the dash design 
The seats are legit sport bucket seats. They're suede and leather. They hold you in place very nicely. The leg bolstering is not too tight. It allows your legs to move around a little bit. But the lower body bolsters are aggressive. They hold you in place. This would be an awesome track day car. I'm not sure what I think of this big bar here that sort of separates the passenger side from the driver's side. But your passenger can hold on here when you're taking corners way too fast like my girlfriend does when I drive. Let's see how it is behind myself. In the rear seat of the Hyundai Elantra and uh, mixed reviews, my feet are definitely squished underneath the seat. However, I do have maybe about two to three inches of leg room in front, behind the seat in front of me. And it is a leather backing, so even if you hit it, it's not that hard. I do not pass the hair test. Uh, it does have a sunroof, but then it scallops away and the roof line goes down a little bit and right around here there's an extra little bulge right in here that's where my head is brushing if I eat up all that leg room then it clears the, ha the hair test you do have these suede seats back here also also they're pretty nice but there's no USB ports there's no rear air vents uh, hard plastic on the top of the doors and hard plastic armrests wow okay it's not even padded back here but it is padded with this suede material on the door door handle itself is pretty low on the door again, kind of like that Nissan Kicks. Uh, the blind spot is pretty big for this kind of car and the headrests and the rear window deck lids kind of high, so watch your visibility there. The seat cushion is very flat, not much thigh support unfortunately. Let's take a look at the outside of this car because that's really where this car stands out. You have this sort of milky blue color that's very similar to the Veloster N, which is right next to it. You have these very aggressive wheels, which I like, kind of a modern design. Black plastic trim around the windows and these aggressive, like, strake marks. Orange trim along the sides. You got Hyundai's origami door creases that's going on these days. Very busy front grille controversial front grille because it's one of the cars that doesn't have a lot of the body color of the car on the front of the car. It's a lot of black plastic. Uh, so if you get into a wreck, you know, there's a lot of fragile plastic that's just going to shatter if you hit anything. So just watch out. You do have a, the N emblem there. Going around the side of the car. More of that orange trim. You got N N styled brakes, large brakes. You have the N logo on the, the uh, side skirt there. You have a black rear diffuser, a black rear spoiler, black trim in the rear taillights, which looks very nice. So it's the sedan version. If you want, if you like the Veloster N, but you want more of a sedan, you can get the Elantra N. If you've traveled internationally to any countries where the roads are not quite as spacious as America, You've probably seen one of these, Toyota CHR. This vehicle is a coupe hatchback SUV thing, and it's very interesting styling styled on the outside. We'll take a look at that in a second. This is the interior. Very nice shapes going across the dash. You have this center screen that's sort of rising from the center console there conventional climate buttons, a lot of piano black finish again, conventional shifter with a backwards manual mode like everything at this freaking show, a center armrest which is adequately padded, that's good, you have these cloth seats uh, that don't have a lot of adjustment, the thigh support is very lackluster at least in this trim vehicle, the seat cushion is very flat, though the seat back is very supportive, nice bolsters there, with this cool little diamond pattern on there. On the doors you have more of this diamond patterning, although it's just kind of hard plastic. You have more hard plastic up here, although it's nice and cushioned down there. A steering wheel, very hard leather. Feels kind of like the Corolla Cross steering wheel, although there's a nice place for your thumb. And I've adjusted myself for the front seat, so let's see how I fit behind myself. So we just got out of the front seat of the Toyota CHR. Time to go into the back seat, and it's like, oh, where's the door handle? Up there. 
you lift this up. Oh, you don't even lift it up, you lift it out. Door comes over. And let's try this. I don't have high hopes. Let's see. It's actually not that bad in here. I have a decent amount of foot room below the seat. Uh, bottom of my shins are just barely grazing the, the bottom edge of the seat. And I have about maybe half an inch to one inch of leg room behind the seats. Um, if I sit back, my knees go into the chair and it passes the hair test. Otherwise, it does not pass the hair test. The roof slopes back rather aggressively back here. And so, there's not much hope. Speaking of not much hope, good luck seeing any car past this approximately two and a half foot wide blind spot. Oh my goodness, yeah, there's an entire, hey, Toyota Corolla. Bye, Toyota Corolla. So again, watch your blind spots, adjust your mirrors, people. And here's the other thing. For any kid, small kid that wants to ride in the back of this and look out the window on road trips, you look to the left, you see that. So it's a bit of a tomb back here. You have to sort of lean forward to look out of the window. Let's take a look at the outside. The outside is, this is possibly one of Toyota's most interesting styled cars. The back end is sort of reminiscent of the last generation Honda Civic. A lot, of, very busy, lots of lines, lots of creases, lots of shapes. You have this big bulging rear wheel fender that's sort of reminiscent of the Toyota Supra almost. Although this car came out before the Supra, so maybe this was like a precursor to that styling design. Front end looks pretty conventional. I have this large nose with a lot of plastic and I like the fact that a lot of the body color is on the front of the car. Not a lot of manufacturers are doing that these days. And everything sort of centers in right on the Toyota logo. Sort of protrudes out more than everything else. So yeah, here's what I was talking about. How do you classify this type of car? Because it kind of looks like a hatchback. It kind of has a two-door coupe sort of a thing going on, but it's also raised up a little bit, and you see a little bit of plastic uh, cladding, especially on the side skirts there, so it's sort of an SUV-ish thing. It's sort of positioned halfway between the Corolla hatchback and the Corolla Cross, which is much more of a conventional SUV, and this looks like a science experiment. This is the inside of the Toyota Avalon. This is a breed of vehicles, which is an endangered breed of vehicles these days in the United States, large sedans. And Toyota still makes this one. It's known for being luxurious and cushy and roomy. I love the interior styling. You have this interesting checkerboard pattern, leather on the doors, interesting wood trim styling on the dash with this protruding corners there and there. It sort of blends into the wood design on the doors. Very plush, perforated leather steering wheel. A very cockpit-oriented dash that emerges, that ascends from the center console. A lot of piano black finish, but a lot of conventional buttons, although because they're all the same, it might be, high, might be difficult to identify them at a glance. Conventional shifter with backwards manual mode, a couple cup holders, some drive mode buttons, eco normal sport, and an electronic parking brake. A large cushioned arm center armrest. You open this up, and there's a, a small cave down in there for all your goodies and some USB charging ports. The front seat, tons of adjustment, power adjustment. Uh, the seat back is rather hard, but the bolstering is nice. Seat cushion, though, is very short. There is decent si thigh support, but it comes up very short on. Uh, my legs, at least, I'm six foot one, and being six foot one ties into a second part of this car's experience, is that it does not pass the hair test, even in the front seat, with the seat all the way down, because of this sunroof, and this protruding part of the roof right here, my hair brushes up against that. So if I can't sit in the front, I can't even show you the back. But, I'll show you the outside, just to savor this breed of car one more time. Very long, large sedan. It kind of looks like a stretched Camry with these, with this interesting large front grille treatment. I think they had a contest with this in the uh, Genesis G90 to see who could have a bigger front grille. Uh, these interesting uh, points on the grill, you know, don't don't hit a pedestrian with these guys. That's that's going to hurt. That's going to leave a mark. 
Other than that, nice character line that goes up the entire length of the vehicle. Some very subdued wheels, chrome trim around the windows. It's a very conservatively styled car. You have a trunk approximately the size of a small apartment building back there for plenty of your stuff. And that's the Toyota Avalon, everybody. I would not be surprised if it goes away in the next couple of years, unfortunately, because people just aren't buying these anymore, sadly. And they're replacing it with vehicles like this. Welcome to the inside of the Ford Bronco Sport. Ford had some extra horse logos laying around and wanted to slam them on the SUV besides the uh, Ford Mustang Mach-E. Just kidding. So back in the day there was a vehicle called the Ford Bronco and it is making a revival with that big blue car over there. But that's supposed to be a Jeep Wrangler competitor and not everybody wants that. Some people just want the appearance that they're driving a Jeep Wrangler but want something a little bit more uh, useful for everyday driving. So Ford made this which essentially has the bones of a Ford Escape with the exterior of a Ford Bronco, hence the Ford Bronco Sport. This is the inside of it, and it's very, you know, very sturdy, a lot of chunky styling cues. The uh, climate knobs have this very chunky rubber texture to them. Lots of hard 90 degree, 45 degree corners to everything. Everything's supposed to look tough. It's very much like a Jeep would be on the inside. You have this nice infotainment display with conventional buttons and knobs. You have a drive selector that's also with a rotary knob with lots of chunky rubbery trim around it. Uh, the interior, you have this semi-plush uh, material, this sort of woven material up on the dash. Nice chunky rubber uh, climate vent adjustments. Everything's supposed to look rugged. You have hard plastic around here, but it's padded on the armrests. Nice padded center console that has a medium amount of storage down there. What I'm glad to see is not a lot of piano black trim. Thank you, Ford. Steering wheel is nice and plush. The nice cushy material around it, and it's comfortable to hold. Plenty of leg room, or plenty of headroom up in the front seat here. In the front seat, it's not designed to be sporty at all. There's not really much bolstering anywhere. But the seat cushion is rather long, although there is not independent thigh support in this particular trim model. It's a nice looking seat, interesting materials. Let's see how it feels in the back. Sitting behind myself in the Ford Bronco Sport. Unfortunately, I do not have much leg room at all. My legs are firmly into the back of the seat, although it is a plush uh, fabric seat, so it's not up against a hard sheet of plastic. Plenty of foot room and plenty of headroom. The uh, sunroof retreats and we have plenty of headroom all the way to the back of the vehicle. Thin C-pillar, D-pillar back there, but the C-pillar here is rather thick, that's interesting. Um, you have more hard plastics around here. Again, very rugged, bare bones design. Let's check out the outside. Speaking of design, this is the Ford Bronco Sport. Keep in mind, the underpinnings of this vehicle are very similar to that of the Escape, their small SUV. But they put the styling cues on the outside, similar to the Big Brother Bronco. So you have plastic cladding around the wheels, big boxy design, you have the big Bronco nameplate across the front grille. I like this sort of dark teal color, it sort of has like an aqua color. This is the Big Bend trim is what I'm seeing. You have sort of aggressive off-roady plastic trim on the side mirrors and on the door handles. You have those nice square shapes in the wheels. It is supposed to be kind of like a Jeep. You know, maybe comparable to a, a Jeep Cherokee maybe or a Jeep Compass, something like that. So, Ford Bronco Sport. When you're not really that tough, 